Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today the question is, what is the difference between persistent depressive disorder and major depressive disorder? Now these two disorders get confused with each other quite a bit, and with good reason. The way they are configured in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM, is confusing. So sometimes when we just look at persistent depressive disorder and major depressive disorder very quickly, at a glance. It would seem that if someone has major depressive disorder and it continues for two years, at the end of those two years, they would be eligible for a diagnosis of persistent depressive disorder. But that's actually not the case. These two disorders are separate. I think what makes part of the classification system here with these two disorders confusing is that oftentimes major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder are comorbid. So these two disorders tend to run together quite a bit, and yet they are distinct classifications. Furthermore, the way they are specified is confusing, but I'll get to that a little later. So when we think of major depressive disorder, we have all these criteria that have to be met for that disorder. And we think of that illness as episodic. So there's a major depressive episode and it will fade to some degree and then another one will come. So the depressive episodes cycle for a period of time, many times years. And with persistent depressive disorder, what we see is depressive symptoms that occur more days than not for two years. And then there are these list of symptoms these symptom criteria for major depressive disorder and for persistent depressive disorder. Now for persistent depressive disorder, the list includes appetite changes like not eating enough or eating too much, sleep changes, insomnia or hypersomnia, low energy or fatigue, low self-esteem, difficulty concentrating or making decisions, and a feeling of hopelessness. Now only two of those symptoms are required along with meeting the other criteria for a diagnosis of persistent depressive disorder. Notably absent are four other symptom criteria that we see in major depressive disorder. So what this means is someone could have major depressive disorder and then when they reach that two year mark when they've had these major depressive episodes for two years they would not qualify for the diagnosis of persistent depressive disorder because there's a difference in the symptom criteria. So that's one confusing part. Now, the other situation is also possible. Someone could never have major depressive episodes. They wouldn't have major depressive disorder. And two years of feeling depressed and meeting two of those six symptoms and the other criteria for persistent depressive disorder, and they could be diagnosed with persistent depressive disorder and not major depressive disorder. So these two disorders exist separately. They can exist separately, but oftentimes as I mentioned they're comorbid. So we also have a large number of specifiers with persistent depressive disorder. And I think one popular view of these specifiers I've seen is that they're overly confusing. I do agree that the disorder, persistent depressive disorder, the way it's set up is a bit confusing, but I do like the specifiers available for this disorder. As a matter of fact, rather than saying there's too many specifiers for persistent depressive disorder, I'd be inclined to say there aren't enough specifiers for other disorders, meaning I'd like to see more specifiers available for mental health disorders in general. But the specifiers for persistent depressive disorder you have with anxious distress, with mixed features, with melancholic features, with atypical features. Then you have both mood congruent and mood incongruent psychotic features. Those two specifiers are available. And peripartum onset. You also have partial remission, full remission, early onset, and late onset available. Now as far as the early onset and late onset, the age, the cutoff age there would be 21. So early would be under 21 and late would be 21 or older. Then you have the specifiers that are contained to the most 
recent two years that have to do with the relationship between the persistent depressive disorder and major depressive disorder. So with this first specifier, pure dysthymic disorder, with pure dysthymic disorder, this means that somebody never had major depressive disorder episodes in that most recent two-year period. So that's just persistent depressive disorder really in its purest form. Then we have three other specifiers here. The first one is with persistent major depressive episode. And what this means is that the time someone is being assessed to determine if they have persistent depressive disorder or they do not have it, the major depressive disorder has been present for the last two years. So the client meets the full criteria for major depressive disorder and they have met it for the most recent two years. The next specifier is intermittent major depressive episodes with current episode. And the next one is without current episode. So what these mean is that the full criteria for major depressive disorder was met in the last two years, but not continuously. And then it tells you whether the individual currently meets the full criteria for major depressive disorder or they don't. That's the with current episode or without current episode piece. So what can happen here, and this is the part I referenced earlier about how this can be confusing with the way the disorders are diagnosed, is someone can have major depressive disorder and they can have persistent depressive disorder at the same time. So they have both diagnoses, but they're not coded as separate diagnoses. This is, I think, particularly confusing for clients. I think it's also confusing for mental health clinicians because it's inconsistent with what we think of when we think of the DSM and how if someone has more than one disorder, it would simply list multiple disorders. Not the case with persistent depressive disorder. Major depressive disorder becomes a specifier of persistent depressive disorder. So one diagnosis, persistent depressive disorder, with a specifier that indicates the person also has major depressive disorder. So again, because this is inconsistent with what we typically see in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, this is a confusing way to arrange these two disorders. Someone with major depressive disorder might, in terms of seeking help, might tell mental health clinicians about that disorder, physicians, other mental health or medical professionals, potentially friends and family. And then at this two year mark, a new diagnosis is given, persistent depressive disorder. And instead of major depressive disorder, they have this specifier. So now they would have to think differently about what type of disorder they have and try to explain to individuals in the mental health field, medical field and others that they have major depressive disorder but it's really persistent depressive disorder with this specifier becomes very confusing. I don't know what the rationale was behind arranging it this way. I'm sure there was a reason, but I think because it's inconsistent, it's just prone to lead to problems. It's, it's just asking to lead to confusion over what diagnosis somebody actually has. Both major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder are serious conditions that necessitate mental health treatment. So to put one as a specifier of the other, I don't see a clear advantage here. Worth noting that the prognosis and the treatment for both of these disorders is fairly similar. We don't see much of a difference in what actually happens in terms of symptoms and with treatment between these two disorders. Although I think the distinction is important. I think the distinction between major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder, meaning having two classifications, I think that is important. I agree with that part. I don't necessarily like the way that they're arranged, but I do agree that we need two separate classifications here. They do present as distinct mental health disorders. I hope you found this description on the differences between major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.